Welcome to the 28th, 2019 meeting of the Florida City Council. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. Jones? Here. Egan? Here. Caputa? Here. Childroth? Here. Hanke? Here. Pagano? Parson? Here. Siam? Here. Harris? Here. Uh, right now, I would like to suspend the agenda and have a moment of silence in, um, for Memorial Day that was held yesterday and for all our, our war dead in this country. <coughs> Thank you. Next item is approval of minutes. Are there any corrections, additions, or minutes of the May 13, 2018 meeting? Mr. Parson. Yes, I would, uh, Mr. President, I would just like to make one correction here on line number 205. Just want to take out one word. It says safety and would like documentation that the adult daycare cares are a safety concern. Just take out the word not. And that'll be it. Okay. We need a motion to amend. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll make a motion to amend the, um, the minutes, second by Mr. Parson. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Councilman Shodroff moves to approve the minutes, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Meetings are, minutes are approved. Next item is a special presentation. Of former Senator Tim Green. As you are aware, uh, the Missouri General Assembly adjourned Friday, May 17th at 6 p.m. Um, safely to say for municipal government no damaging laws were passed even though there were attempts uh, i'm going to go through my powerpoint um, and basically give you some highlights and then talk about what i handed out and if you have any questions um, there were 97 truly agreed and finally passed bills in the 100th general assembly those bills composed of only five percent of all 1,944 bills introduced in the General Assembly in 2019. So to give you an idea when the beginning session starts and everyone's hearing about this bill passing or this bill introducing uh, this past year, only 5% of every bill that was introduced was passed. There were 518 Senate bills that were introduced. Of those introduced, 175 were reported from committee, only 62 were perfected. That means basically came out of the Missouri Senate. There are 22 standing committees in the Senate and 18 statutory committees. The two notable bills that had interest to this municipal government was SJR 21 by Senator May from the city of St. Louis and SJR 22 by Senator Nasheed from the city of St. Louis create new constitutional provisions relating to the mo modification to the farm of governments, basically allowing those that are affected by a constitutional amendment have the right to decide and not the state as a whole. Uh, those two resolutions did not make it out of the Senate but the resolution that did make it was House Joint Resolution 54 by Representative Plotcher out of Chesterfield, St. Louis County. That did make it out of the Senate, passed overwhelmingly, 
It did make it out of uh, the Senate. It made it out of the House. It did make it out of the Senate committee, but it was not brought up the last two days of session. So that issue of um, who can vote was not completed. Uh, there were many pieces of legislation that dealt with modifying tax increment financing. All those pieces of legislation would benefit areas that truly had blight so that tax increment financing would be a tool that would be used how it was originally meant to be used. Uh, I do want to give Senator Koenig out of West St. Louis County uh, credit for pushing that. Uh, it did make it out of the Senate. It did make it out of the House Committee, but it did not pass either. In the Missouri House, there were 870 bills that were introduced in the Missouri House. Uh, of that, 230 of them were per perfected. Um, notable bills is probably the one that would affect municipal governments the most was also by Representative Plotcher, and it was House Bill 1189. He introduced it late in session. Within two weeks of introducing the bill, had a hearing and had it voted out immediately. Uh, he used the city of Florissant as part of his testimony, and what he wanted to do was make it uh, illegal for municipal governments to pass an ordinance to require when you put your house up for sale that you get an inspection. Uh, he then proceeded, since that bill did get passed out of committee, he put it on four Senate bills that came over from the Senate uh, with the assistance of Senator Walsh. All four of those pieces of legislation did not go anywhere when they came back to the Senate. Uh, the special inter interest group that was pushing it, uh, some said was the Kansas City Realtors, which did not make sense. Why is the Kansas City Realtors worried about an ordinance that the city of Florissant, city of Bell Fountain, many other municipal governments in the metropolitan area have? Um, but I do want to make special uh, attention to the Missouri Municipal League's lobbyist, Shannon Hawk. She was of great assistance in helping me keep track when they were trying to sneak that amendment on. But that's why I contacted several of you to contact Public Works about that issue late April, is because it just flew up out of nowhere and was coming. So explaining to him the reason for that is when you get occupancy permits, you want the buyer to know firsthand the problems with that home before they move in, that once they purchase it, then they're dealing with it. So it was a simple explanation, once again, sometimes. I know you don't want to believe it, but special interest has a way of pushing certain issues. Um, that pretty much rounds out all the bills. I had a PowerPoint that could have um, brought more forth, um, I do want to make note, even though I am no longer working on the issue, the House bill that modifies provisions that disallow municipalities dealing with dangerous dogs and breed specific did not pass. Uh, that's another one that was being pushed uh, once again. I've given you a handout. What this handout is, is it's three, four pieces of legislation. The first three deal with issues relating to transportation. Working with the mayor on some public safety issues, I wanted to highlight these three bills because these would be perfect vehicles for that issue later in session to be attached to once the bureaucracy uh, is supportive. When you attach an amendment at the end, the one that can be a hurdle is the bureaucracy. So I put those three pieces of legislation just trying to outline to you the possible vehicles that could have uh, taken place. The one thing that I do want you to look at that did pass that I think has benefits to municipal governments is House Committee Substitute to Senate Committee Substitute to Senate Bill 203 relating to property in certain cities. This was pushed by Senator Curls out of Jackson County and she's passionate for her community and when there is an abandoned piece of property, it's a piece of legislation she worked on for about five years, that 
a neighbor can take some responsibility in cleaning up that property without being civilly or criminally charged for trespassing. So that's a piece of legislation. Once it's signed and we get more details on how it possibly could be implemented, you might want to contact with your city attorney if there is anything in that that would be of interest to you as municipal leaders. Tim, does that include church groups or just? Yes, it does. Church groups also? Yep, that's in it too. That's who kind of was active in the Kansas City region pushing that. Mr. Jones. Yeah, Tim, uh, I know you have a lot of knowledge and background and know a lot of people up there. Have you heard anything more about uh, Better Together? Uh, any of Rex's uh, lobbyists up there saying anything anymore? Is there uh, back room talks? Is there people whispering about it? Or is it completely dead as of you here? Um, the House Joint Resolution 54, which did pass the House, which was voted out of the Senate, did not get brought up to the Senate floor because it was about three days left of debate. And if you heard early on, uh, the last week, two of the days, was a filibuster by a conservative caucus of the Republicans against the tax incentives for the GM plant. So his lobbyists were, I would say, influential of assisting and making sure that was not brought up in the last week. So I guess just to give you what transpired as opposed to my opinion where they're going from here okay great thanks mm -hmm. thank you mr jones that it, Tim? that's it i said three Sorry. minutes was like three <laughs> thank minutes you <very> much. <laughs> thank you sir thank you, <laughs> thank you. next item is hearing from citizens which we have none John? I can't see. We have none. Next item is communication, which we have none. Next item is public hearing, public hearing number 1905009. Notice is hereby given in accordance with section 405135 of the Florissant City Code, the zoning ordinance as amended, that a public hearing will be held by the City Council of the City of Florissant, St. Louis County, Missouri, in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue St. Francois on, on Tuesday, May 28, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. <coughs> to issue an amendment to B-5 ordinance to allow for a new dialysis center for the property located at 13015 New Halls Ferry Road. Citizens and parties of interest will have an opportunity to be heard at said public hearing. Anyone with special needs should contact city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839-7630 or TDD 839-5142. Petitioner present, please. Good evening. Uh, for your record, my name is Ed Griesedek. I'm an attorney. I have offices in St. Louis County, Missouri. I represent the petitioner. It's Florissant Plaza Madrid LLC. They're a Pennsylvania corporation um, operating in the state of Missouri. They build, operate, and maintain DaVita dialysis centers in and throughout uh, Missouri and the country. Uh, as an overview, DaVita is one of the two largest dialysis centers in the U.S. There's two big ones, and they're one of the two. Um, they operate in St. Louis and in Florissant already. They're, uh, adjacent, they're in the adjacent center, the center directly to the north of this right now, and they operate, so they operate about 100 yards from where the building is that we're proposing. Um, our goal is to build uh, a state-of-the-art facility, a new facility from the one that we've got, uh, immediately adjacent to it, on a separate parcel of property, uh, there's going to be no interruption with services, so the people who are receiving services at the DeVita now will continue to receive services there. We're going to build the new site, and I'll talk about this in a minute, in this 1.8 acre parcel. And then once that's finished, it is then our intent to move the DeVita from the existing center to this center and then renovate the center. So it's a two-step process, the first process being that we would rebuild this building 
or build this building, and then we'd renovate the uh, the new facility or the old facility. Um, once it's open, we'll improve the existing center. It's all consistent with the city uh, fluorescence ordinances and improves the entire area, the entire site, and the location. Uh, the area was originally annexed from St. Louis County. So it, initially, many, many moons ago, Florissant annexed this property from St. Louis County. In St. Louis County, their planned development district is called a C8. Yours is called a B5. And so when you took it in, it was zoned as a C8, and you called it, we're going to call you a B5, but it was never technically zoned B5. So one of the things we're asking for is that we rezone the property from B5, which is how you're holding it, to B5. So we're going to ask that it be zoned what it actually is. Uh, so we first ask that it be rezoned to B5. Uh, then we build our plans according to the plans, which you all already have, and then come back to the city for the next phase. We're the owner of this property. The parcel that we're talking about, and this is at the south end of the property. So you've got New Halls Ferry Road going up here. This is generally up to the north. You can see Microphone. the center here. Microphone, please. All right. Sorry. Thank you. I like to walk around. Um, you've got Parker along this area. You'll see that there's various curb cuts which already exist on the site. So we're not adding any additional new curb cuts to the site. We would be taking this parcel, uh, and it's 1.8 8 acres in size. It's zoned B5. It was C8, as I indicated, in the county, and then we would rezone it to the B5. Its address uh, would be 13015 New Halls Ferry Road. New Halls Ferry Road, and it's vacant. Our request again is twofold. One, to rezone it from B5 to B5, and then the second one is for a land disturbance permit so that we can grade the property and start moving on. On May 3rd, we appeared in front of your Planning and Zoning Commission. We received their uh, recommendation for unanimous approval. Your staff has also provided with you with a draft ordinance. It is uh, entirely acceptable to us. There's one comment in there that has a reference to a sign that we're not building. So we would ask, and, and we talked to Mr. Parsons about that, uh, that it says that we're going to be removing a sign. Well, we're not putting the sign in there in the, in the first place. So that's just one little typo that's in the plan. Uh, looking at the site, this is one parcel, one part of the 6.3 acre Plaza Madrid Center. Uh, we're looking at just the southern 1.8 acres. To the north, you've got Plaza Madrid. Uh, to the south, you've got Parker Road. You've also got the intersection of New, uh, New Halls Ferry and Parker. And to the west, you have Parker Road. So we're surrounded by the roads. They all have at least two lanes in each direction. I think most of them have a left turn lane. So there's at least five lanes of traffic circling around the property. Uh, the site itself presently, as I indicated a couple times, it's vacant. It would be 1.8 acres in size. It is now entirely covered in asphalt. There's not a, an intentional uh, bit of landscaping throughout the parcel. We would be taking up all the asphalt of the site and, uh, and, and adding that. And I'll talk about that in a moment. The construction for the facilities is brick, stone, and block. It's very attractive. We've provided you with renderings and your plans. All rooftop equipment would be shielded with parapet walls, and our uh, uh, trash receptacles are in site-proof containers. The building we would be building, as we show there, it's 9,049 square feet. It's one story in size. The traffic, as I indicated, goes through the three existing curb cuts. Parking. Uh, we meet or exceed all the city standards. We have 41 spaces, including four ADA spaces. And along the rear, we have a loading space, which is also required under your ordinances. Uh, to the interior of the site, we've got a, this will be a covered area where you can come in and drop off a patient and then pick them up. So if it's raining or something like that, you would be able to come in, go into, go into this spot, and then uh, leave. Lighting, uh, we'd have five light poles all on the site sprinkled throughout the seat. The site, they meet or exceed your standards. They're all shielded to minimize off fall of light. Uh, landscaping, again, we meet or exceed all the city standards. Presently, as I indicated, there's no landscaping on the site. It's all asphalt. We'll be taking up the asphalt, and then we'll be repaving the site with curb and gutter, and then placing landscaping and trees along New Halls Farrier, interior to the site, and then also along Parker, and then again, interior to the site. 
Uh, we have designed landscape islands, obviously. We think it will dramatically improve the appearance for all residents and anybody who's driving up and down the area. We think it's going to be a tremendous improvement for the area. For the landscape islands, we're adding 14 new trees and 129 new shrubs. Um, stormwater, we meet or exceed all MSD standards. As I've indicated, there's now, it's all t entirely runoff. After we're developing it, we're adding landscaping, so it will have actually less impact than after development than it has now before development. Uh, signage, there will be uh, either monument sign or building signs. It will all be according to your ordinances, and uh, we'll, we'll, pre we'll present those at a later time. Uh, in conclusion, we think this is a dramatic improvement to the, uh, to the site uh, for the city. It's a change in appearance and feel for the area. It's a state-of-the-art needed facility. It's consistent with your master plan for the city and for the area. Uh, we would request your recommendation for approval. As I think I've uh, mentioned previously, we're asking for three readings tonight, if we could have that, if you felt so inclined. Um, we already have with the city our construction plans, and they're being reviewed by the city at, at this time. We're ready to go as soon as the city says we, we can uh, move forward. So we would like, um, if you could, uh, to give us three readings tonight if, if that meets with your approval. And uh, because we're ready to go and we'd like to see improvement as quickly as we could and frankly our patients that are using the existing facility which is not in the greatest shape are looking for a, a new facility and so we'd like to do that if we could. I'm also here with Callum Beerthaler, uh, our engineer. He'd be happy to respond to any questions and I appreciate all the help that the city and the mayor has given us in moving us through your process and we look forward to uh, enhancing the city. Are there any questions? Mr. Parson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Griesedek, um, thank you for coming here to speak with us. Your presentation was very thorough. Uh, I appreciate all the information that you have given us here today. I, actually, you answered a lot of the questions that I, I planned on asking. Um, however, I do have a, a, a few that I want to follow up on. And first of all, in terms of the, uh, the old facility right now, how many, do you know how many clients are, are in that facility now well, approximately? What they... And how many the new facility is going to hold? It, it has either 16 or 20 in the existing facility. The new one will have 24. Okay. So the idea is that there would be four new stations, if you can. When you go into dialysis, and I learned more about dialysis than I ever knew, or the... Uh, before, when you go in, you're going to do it three times a week. It's about a three-hour session each time you do it. And um, so you come in, and a station would then be taken for about three hours, two and a half to three hours. And, and then when th that opens up, then, then there would be another one, another one, et cetera. Okay. Then also you, you mentioned that um, once the new building is is in operation that you're going to renovate the old building so is there plans to just renovate that old building or is there are there plans to tear down the old building i haven't seen the plans it's my understanding from our conversations that it's to demolish it and rebuild a new one okay all right thank but you but that's that's a separate part i'll you'll unfortunately you're going to get stuck with me again right, right. when i when i come <laughs> forward with that okay okay um, well, if you're going to do some new things over there, you're certainly welcome to come back anytime. Uh, additionally, though, how, do you know if there are going to be any additional employees that uh, the dialysis center is going to hire? You'll have um, one nurse can take about four spots. And so you would have one additional nurse. If we're having four different spots, you might have four additional or one additional nurse. You might have one more overflow person, something like that, but the, the amount of people there is, is nominal. All right, and we talked about this before, but I just want uh, you to make this clear to everyone else. Al although there is a, another dialysis center uh, owned uh, by this business and Cross Keys, there's no plans to, to shut that one down when this one is open. No, right? and you okay. asked me about that and I checked on it. There's no, there's no intention to do anything at Cross Keys. Okay, okay. Um, as far as the, the monument signs, I, I just want to state I am going to be, I am making a motion that we amend um, the ordinance to remove provision F, subsection 2, 
because um, as Mr. Griesedek stated, that's something that they do not want included. I think it's lines 133 and 134 under your bill. Uh, is it 133? Okay. All right. Well, so moved then. 133 and 134. Okay. Make a motion that we uh, amend it to yeah, remove that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's present it. All right. All right. Um, I'm sorry. One last question. You you are asking for three readings today. Uh, if that happens, when do you believe construction uh, would take place? The the construction plans. This is a unique situation. The construction plans are already on file with the city, and uh, with the, with the mayor's assistance, they're looking at those. And uh, so what we're what we're doing is we're ready to go as soon as you all are. And so assuming that they approve the construction plans, I'm asking for the grading permit, and, that, and then you would give us that, and we'd, we'd start. Um, we we start anticipate summer, that right? we, okay. as soon as we possibly can. I don't really know when that is. Is it four weeks? Is it six weeks or something? But it's pretty darn quick. This summer. So this summer yes. you're looking at this hard. Mm -hmm. okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parson. Mr. Jones. Yeah, I've looked through this uh, since we've had our packets. Uh, Looks like a fantastic building, yeah. uh, brick, nice and sturdy, just like we all like here at the council. Uh, we didn't have to argue with you to get the brick. Uh, <laughs> it, you came forward with it. Uh, uh, we are a labor-friendly council. Mm -hmm. uh, we do hope, or I do hope, uh, that you use contractors that use apprenticeship programs uh, when they're teaching their employees. Uh, we're big on education, especially in the construction industry, and so I things are done right the first right. time. And I'm previously aware of that from dealings with the city. So we're, Great. Yep. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Pagano. Thank you. Um, Mr. Um, Parson had already asked my question, but okay. I'm very excited that something is being done with it. We are, too. Thank you, Ms. Pagano. Mr. Egan. Thank you, Mr. President. To be clear with this initial proposal, is the, and I went by there today, I think it's 13001, is that the payday loan thing or the little loan building you speak at? That's staying there, correct? The, oh, the building? There's like a little gas station, I think is a, yeah, right, that's, that's a loan. That's staying there. That's, yes. in, in phase one, we'll call phase one what you're proposing today, is there any demolition with the existing structures? I think it starts at 021 up there? No. But that's something that you're... It's entirely separate. So this okay. is... The, the existing structure stops right there. Okay, that's 021, I believe. Right. And, and so this is a 1.8 okay. acre parcel. I'm going to file with the recorder of deeds a subdivision plat to, record, to subdivide this. We're going to have shared access. Presently, there's shared access here, here, and here. And uh, we'll subdivide this off, and then we'll come back with this. All right, and the entire Plaza Madrid area that, that shopping center is owned by this company, correct? Say that again? That, that entire building that's vacant right now, that is owned by this company, correct? It is now, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. And welcome to Florissant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Mr. Siam. Thank you. My question has been asked and answered. Thank you, Mr. Siam. Mr. Shildroff. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Griesedek, and thank you to the petitioner for doing something with a piece of property that's long been in need. Um, it's one of the entrances to our city. Um, I don't want the petitioner or yourself to take this the wrong way. Um, historically, since um, I've been on this body, we haven't done a three reading for a project of this magnitude with the brick and mortar structure. We did one a couple months ago in my ward, but it was a simple subdivision of a lot. There was no uh, construction being done. So I don't want the petitioner to take it the wrong way or you yourself or your associate. Um, I'm for this project. I just think that something of this magnitude, we need to give it the proper diligence and not do three readings tonight. But like I said, I don't want, I don't mean to offend you or the petitioner. So please don't take it that way. No, I, I hear what you're saying. I just to, to uh, argue back, if if I could, which is what I do. Um, the 
this is a project that they started, frankly, they before they hired someone to, to sort of guide them through the process, they started by submitting construction plans. So they put, frankly, the cart before the horse. And that's their fault. It's not your fault. Um, they designed the building. They put construction plans together. They came in with that. And your city very properly said, guys, it's not zoned. You need this. You need that. And then they, they ended up hiring us. And we said, well, this is the process. This is how you have to go. So they've closed on the property. They are paying money on the property, frankly. They built, to using your words, they're building a really expensive building. And they're not trying to cut corners. They're trying to do it. But time's very literally money. And, and so we would implore you to maybe reconsider your position and say, look, we've operated in as good faith as we can. You know what it is that we're going to do. We've given you every part of the construction plans. Many of the times that you want to have multiple readings is because you think, well, what's going to happen to the existing facility? Well, there is no existing facility. What's going to happen to the traffic patterns? Well, there is no traffic patterns. This doesn't generate any traffic to be real honest with you. Um, is there any question is this is an improvement for the site and for the area? There's not. We, we looked at the landscaping for all the facilities that are surrounding us. We blow everything off the, off the, out of the water. And, um, and so they, 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 they've given you the, 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 and I don't want to say it the wrong way, the, they've offered a, a top-notch product. They haven't tried to cut a corner. They made a mistake, which unfortunately caused them to close before they should have closed. So they're starting. So they've been paying on this, and it's a pretty big nut every single month. So we would. So time is money, and we would ask you to, uh, if you could, do this. Uh, if you could find it in your heart, do this, and and let us get going on the project because we're only waiting on the city at this point, and to wait two more weeks, first, really little benefit. Um, only costs us money. Mr. Harris? I, I think my questions were mostly answered when uh, Mr. Egan asked about the, the, the lot that's southwest of there, but it shows up at the, the top left screen. Uh, it, you, that's not you, or that's not uh, the same company, but you also don't own that lot. No. It, okay. This is what we own, is the center. Got it. Up this way. We do not own that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hankey. Yes, thank you. Just a personal comment <clears throat> on his public hearing. I want to thank you for the clear, concise way you presented what, you, what, you're, what you're doing here. You answered a lot of the questions in your initial presentation. I'd like to see a little bit more of that in a public public hearing. Thank I you always consider myself, I failed if you have any questions. Right. <laughs> so I, I kind of like everybody to say, oh, yeah. yeah thank you for great. your presentation and welcome to floor, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sidney. Mayor? I just want to say I really appreciate you guys making this investment. It's going to be a beautiful piece of property. It's ugly now. It's horrible. Um, get a lot of complaints about it. So I know that the, neighbor, the neighbors are going to be excited about this as we are. So I just want to say thank you for uh, investing here in Florissant. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah, um, I know in the P and Z it says something about MSD. Yeah, we There's meet or exceed MSD standards. Frankly, we meet or exceed them because presently now it is all impervious. And after our development, it will be partially impervious. You know, there'll be 20% green space or whatever it is. So, uh, and we also do, we have a little stormwater detention area in this part of the, in this part of the plan, but we meet or exceed MSD's new standards, which have the water filtration and the water storage plans. So your, um, your plans was approved by MSD? They will be, they've been conceptually approved, but they won't, MSD won't finally give me final approval until you give me approval. Well, it says in P and Z that we won't issue no permits unless MSD approves your. They, it's a standoff. They, yeah, they. Uh, I like to suspend the rules, uh, Mr. Lum. Can you explain that? You don't have to suspend the rules. Oh, Public hearing. Mr. Lum. Good evening. 
Field Loan Building Commissioner. Um, typically, MSD is a lengthy process uh, for approval anywhere up, depending on how the complexity of the project goes. It's standard language in the, uh, I believe you're, uh, the uh, President may be referring to the uh, staff report suggested motion for every B-5 that we don't issue building permits until uh, we have approvals from other agencies. Uh, MSD is no exception to that. Um, and that's right. That's, that's what our experience is. We present it to them, they give you conceptual approval. And then what happens is the city comes back and they say, we've approved it, here you go. Then we give it to them, then they stamp then it. They do and final then, approval. And then you give me the construction permit. And that's, this is one of the reasons we, frankly, especially for the re three readings, is it's a time consuming. MSD process. approval is monitored by the city engineer, Tom Goldcamp. A couple of other clarifications. Um, one is that building plans were reviewed. Uh, comments were returned to the consultants. Uh, we are waiting for resubmission to uh, the review comments that were sent. So we're just waiting on the cor plan corrections. And uh, one other correction is that the uh, building is going to look a lot like limestone, but some of that limestone look is actually split, f is actually a ground face architectural block. So it's not a full masonry building, but there's a brick and stone also on it. Thank you. Are there any other? So. Is it right? Is that a yes or a no, Mr. Lum? I mean, does MSD require our permits first, or do we require MSD's approval? I mean, what it says in the through the um, in the staff recommendations in the public hearing. Can you it says point that, me to that? It says that. The city will not issue you issue the contract or no permits until MSD approves what they're submitting. Well, that's true. I can't. The land disturbance permit can't be approved. So, uh, in in order for them to cut ground, they won't be issued a land disturbance permit by the city engineer until the the city engineer is has uh, enough approval from MSD. So, I believe that's true. Mr. Hessel? I'd suggest you refer to the ordinances, uh, and Mr. Griesedick is correct. MSD will have final say on the approval of the plans, so the city goes first, then we submit an MSD, and the ordinance specifically says that all stormwater and drainage facilities, which is the important part, shall be constructed, and all landscaping shall be installed prior to the occupancy of the building. That's really what the city is primarily concerned about, to make sure that before an occupancy permit is issued, that all the stormwater, drainage, as well as the landscaping is fully installed. So I'm comfortable that, that they have done everything they need to and that they'll get their approval and then take it to MSD. And actually the requirements of the B-5, uh, Mr. President, is that a conceptual plan is approved under the B-5. Um, and then there's backup language that Mr. Hessel referred to. Right, and as Mr. Griesedek pointed out, they're already passed conceptual mm -hmm. paper yes. actual plans, mm -hmm. which is unusual. Right. And not entirely a good idea, but... <laughs> not entirely <laughs> a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Hessel. Mr. Jones. Yeah, Mr. Griesedek, I just want to let you know I will be supporting this bill tonight. Uh, we usually don't like to do three readings. Uh, this is a big plus for the city of Florissant. We're glad you're coming here and making it better. Uh, it's a terrible piece of property that it's on now, so uh, that's the only reason my vote is swinging that way. Uh, I, I wish it was a little bit more plain on Mr. Lum's deal if it was a yes or a no. Uh, it was told to us one way, and then we have to go the other way. It looks like we're going against our administration, and I don't like doing that, but it's sometimes it gets very confusing up here. Uh, but I will be supporting it tonight. Uh, Thank like you I said, much. I'm not a big one to break uh, uh, the, the behind the scene oath, but uh, uh, this is a nice building. Uh, I am for it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Mr. Egan. 
you know, this property has been a, a blemish on this city since I was on the council, and I've been on almost eight or nine years now, and I'm I'm ready for it to get done. Thank Happy you. that you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Uh, yeah, with, with three readings, um, I know in the past we have, haven't done three readings on a major project like that, and I feel if we start doing it, we will open the book and everybody else would expect it. They said, well, if you did it for this so-and-so, did it for that person, did it for him, did it for her, why aren't you doing it for me? And that, that is my biggest concerns on three readings, you know, mm -hmm. on certain projects. I understand. I, I've been doing this a long time also, and I don't, I can't count on one hand the amount of times I've asked for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak or comment on the public hearing? Seeing none, Councilman Parson moves to close the public hearing, second by myself. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Public hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next item is old business. First item on old business is substitute bill Number 9486. Councilman Jones moves to accept the substitute bill. Second by myself. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Councilman Jones moves for a second reading. Second by Councilman Egan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance authorizing the City of Florissant, Missouri to enter into the lease purchase agreement as lessee with BOKFNA as lessor to finance the cost of making energy efficient improvements to the various city facilities and authorizing execution of certain documents and actions in connection therewith. Councilman Hinkey moves for a third reading. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance authorizing the City of Florissant, Missouri to enter into a lease purchase agreement as lessee with BOKFNA as lessor to finance the cost of making energy efficient improvements to various city facilities and authorizing execution of certain documents and actions in connection therewith. Board of Final Vote is taken on this bill. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on it? Seeing none. Clerk, please pull the council. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Pagano? Oh. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Harris? Yes. Substitute bill number 9486 passes and becomes ordinance 8511. Bill number 9490. Councilman Hinky moves for a second read, second by Mr. Shodroff. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Controlled Technology and Solutions, LLC, DBA, CTS Group for the Guaranteed Energy Savings Contract for various municipal buildings. Councilman Scholdorf moves for a third reading, second by Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into agreement with the Control Technology and Solutions LLC DBA CTS Group for the guaranteed energy savings contract for various municipal buildings. Four to final vote is taken. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this matter? Robert Smith, 2823 Chapel View. Uh, first question. Uh, was this ever put out to be, or is it just this one company? Is it just CTS? Yes, it has been put out. There was a couple other contractors that did bid on this also. Um, not sure of the names of them, Robert. But I know the CTS, um, we have used these in the past. They are a very reputable company. 
there was other company that it was put out. It was put out to be, and there were other companies that did. I believe that, so. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to say 2016, but I wouldn't swear to that. It was and a it, couple. It, it, there was bidding that went on at that point in time. We entered into a contract with them. As part of that whole bidding process, as well as the awarding of the contract, it was anticipated that additional work could arise from that bidding process. So we, have, we didn't do a bid in 2019, but we did do bidding. I, again, I apologize. I think it was 2016. It was 16 or 17. Correct. Okay. All right. And let me understand that this, the numbers that they're giving, this is going to be like $3.4 million for this entire. This ain't actually for the finance, Robert. This is for the contractor itself, this bill. Right. This is for, for you to sign the agreement, right, with yes. CTS. The okay. finance is already taken care of. Okay. Well, then the question is, the money that's in the contract that you're going to be signing. So that's what my question is, because it is part of the contract. So it's in the contract for $3.4 million. If you sign on that contract, then you're liable for that amount. That's what I'm asking. Yes. And I guess we're in, in process of having um, some add-ons, too. Okay, so, so the numbers that they're giving that we would be recouping or saving is 40, 43,000 a year? I believe it was that number. I believe it was that number, 43, 45,000. Here, is he? Yeah, Todd. Todd's here. Okay. Is he here? Yes. Okay. So, Todd, would you like to come up here? And I believe there's a representative from CTS. And, yes. Al, Al, Ellie, you want to also? There Robert, can you ask a question again for Todd? The amount of savings that they are projecting is that forty three thousand a year? Um, that's just for the lighting portion. Um, I think the energy savings is a little over sixty thousand, um, and the uh, operational savings was um, eighty thousand. Um, and I guess too, the big thing is not just doing it for the. I mean, the savings are an added benefit. It's Mm -hmm. um, the savings are really just an added benefit of this project. Uh, the main reason that you're doing this project is because all of your equipment is well past its useful life and in need of replacement. What's nice is that the savings help contribute and help fund the project over time. And the amount of time that you're going by on these numbers is 10 years? Um, it's a 15-year contract for savings. So it's over a 15-year period that you're looking to save well, that these amounts of money. Each year. Each. So, so you're that's saving. Every, that's every this year. This is every year yes. for the next 15 years. Yes. Okay. That's all I needed. Thank, Thank you. you, Robert. Clerk, please pull the count. I'm sorry. Mr. Egan. No, I'm, I'm good. Clerk, please follow counsel. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Harris? Yes. Bill number 9490 passes and becomes ordinance 8512. Bill number 9491. I'll make a motion, move for a second reading, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes <coughs> have. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into agreement with Waterproofing Technologies Incorporated DBA WTI 
for roof repair and masonry work for various multiple municipal buildings. Councilman Jones moves for a third reading, second by myself. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with Waterproofing Technologies Incorporated, DBA, WTI, for roof repair and masonry work for various municipal buildings. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this bill? Seeing uh, clerk, please pull the council. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Puda? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hanke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Harris? Yes. Bill number 9491 passes and becomes ordinance 8513. Bill number 9492. Councilman Hinky moves for a second reading, second by Ms. Pagano. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. When it's authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with the <coughs> Metropolitan Park and Recreation District, BBA, Great Rivers Greenway District for reimbursement of funds to repair the Sunset Park Trail. Councilman Hickey moves for a third reading, second by Mr. Siam. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Park and Recreation District, DVA Great Rivers Greenway District for reimbursement of funds to repair the Sunset Park Trail. For the final vote take, does anyone in the audience like to speak on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, please pull the council. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hanke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Harris? Yes. Bill number 9492 passes and becomes ordinance 8514. Next item is new business, board appointments. Seeing none. Next item is request, Ward 8. Councilman Parson moves to approve the request to keep four chickens for Jules Sejewowski for the property located at 1234 Cheyenne Drive. <laughs> Should I try to get that? I, I did pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. That was a really great attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Second by Mr. Jones, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Application is approved. Well done. Excuse me. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I did pretty good, I thought. Next item is bills for first reading. Bill number 9495. Ordinance authorizing an amendment to an existing B-5 development to allow for a new dialysis center for the property located at 13015 New Halls Ferry Road. Next item is Mr. Parson. Yes, and in terms of that first reading, I, I want to, uh, if it's appropriate, I want to make a motion to amend uh, that ordinance. And I want to make sure that I have this correct. I know that Mr. Hessel stated that it was. You should Robert. move for a second reading first. Oh, I'm sorry, move for second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Then you need a second. Then he, then he needs then I need a second. amendment. I move for a second. I apologize. All right, Mr. Mr. Parson moves for his second read, second by Ms. Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Discussion. Before you do the vote, yeah, discussion. You're supposed to do discussion. Right. Discussion. No, now you can. Now, <laughs> now I like, there you go, Mr. Parson. We're on the Based phone. upon our presentation, the presentation that was made earlier, I would like to make a motion to amend. Uh, on the ordinance that I have, it's actually number 207. I know John was stating that it was 133, so I want to make line, sure we're all on, in line. It's on page 4, line 133 and 134. It's at the top of page 4. The yeah, it's different. It's 207 on our copy. Well, that's, on the, that's on the uh, planning and zoning minutes. Okay. Yeah, if you, okay. If you refer to the legislation rather the legislation. than... Okay, all right, all right. Now I got you. Okay. So I would make the motion to amend number line, line number 133, ask that that be removed regarding the, uh, the stone monuments. Actually, more correctly, it's 133 and, and 134. 134. Right. To delete the requirement for two ground monument signs being located as shown on AS1-304 and E2, dated 130, 2019. So moved. 
There's a motion to amend bill number 9494 and delete line 133 and 134. That is correct. Second by Mr. Hinkey. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Move for third. Now you have to, are we going to vote on the second reading? I have to vote okay. on the motion to for second reading. I'm taking us off the rails here. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 All in favor? Jackie still wants to talk. Oh, Wait, Ms. hold on. Pagano, hold on. We're still on discussion. Hold Ms. on. <laughs> Please. So, um, Martha, I just want to ask the petitioner one more thing. When, when you were talking, you said you wouldn't be starting construction for another four weeks or so. Am I correct? Move to That's yeah. accurate. Yeah. Well, and then I just want uh, to ask. Make a move to suspend the, the bill or to suspend oh, the uh, Robert's agenda. Rules. Yeah. Suspend the rules. I apologize. So the so, Second. That, that, All that would be my uh, only question. Uh, All opposed. Thank okay. you. Okay. Now, Mr. President, this is not his first rodeo. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Robert and I sometimes don't get along. But um, so then I have another question, and, and this is going to be up here to our city clerk and to probably our city, our senior member. As much as I want this, uh, more than anything, I, since I've been on the council, I don't ever remember construction going in three. So I'm really having a problem that I'm opening up a can of worms. So I just want to ask them if they ever remember this happening with construction going in three on a public hearing night. Can I make it easier on you all? Can I withdraw my request for three readings? And what we'll do is uh, we'll have the staff uh, finish the comments because we have to get back to them on the comments. And I think rather, I don't want you to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, and no, I, I'm very excited, and I know the council is, and we've been waiting a long time for something this nice to come mm -hmm. in there, and I don't want to hold you back. Right. But I, but I also don't want to create a problem for the future for us. Does right. that make sense? I don't. Yes. I, I, I in no way do not want. I want this. I, I hear you, and so, that's. I, that's why that's, I was just that's the question. Nothing physically happens different in the next two weeks. But what happens is, it, it, is, is Mr. Hessel was reading the lines 133, 134. Mm -hmm. He referenced the plans, and they're January 2019. So they had done this a long time ago, and, they, and, and it's just, it, it's killing them. But it's another two weeks. And, and if we have to do that, I, I don't want to create a, a bunch of turmoil for that. Would I like it absolutely positively? Did I ask? Right. Not, did I ask without thinking about it? No, it's a big deal. But at the same time, I don't want to. I don't want to snatch a defeat out of the jaws of victory either. I appreciate that, and I, and I welcome you. I just want to make it easier in the long run. So you can go for a second if you want. But do you do you ever remember? No. Okay. That's it. No. But that's, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pagano. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I just have it. For a second reading. For a second reading. Okay. For a second. Okay. Yeah, for a second reading. Ordinance authorizing an amendment to an existing B5 development to allow for a new dialysis center for the property located at 13015 New Hallsbury Road. Thank you. We, we still got one more. That's it. Thank you very so much. Ed, since there's no motion for a third reading, we'll, be, we'll see you in two weeks. In two weeks. Thank you very much. Okay, next, okay. next item is council announcements. Mr. Parson. Yes, first off, I would like to say that... Um, the uh, Great Ward 8 cleanup event is scheduled for this Saturday um, on June the uh, 1st at 11 a.m. Uh, we're meeting on the rear parking lot of the James J. Egan Center. Of course, this event is being uh, held with our students from McClure North who are helping out to clean up the streets of Florissant. 
uh, and also get some of their uh, community service time that they need towards graduation. It's uh, absolutely fabulous to have our youth involved. Uh, in this type of a project and it's not just uh, dedicated for our youth to come out and help with the cleanup uh, all of our residents are welcome no matter what age so uh, feel free to come out on June the 1st at uh, 11 o'clock and on the uh, rear parking lot of the James J. Egan Center uh, additionally I want to make an announcement um, speaking of McClure North we have a uh, student her name is Paige Faulkner uh, and she I'm sorry, make sure I got all the information. She is qualified uh, to, uh, for the third year in a row to be on the Missouri USA women's wrestling team. Uh, I received an email from our grandmother and they are having an event in Fargo, North Dakota on July the 15th through the 17th. Um, she is also asking for some sponsorship uh, for this trip Paige has, has been doing very well in her third year of wrestling. Uh, for this year, she has uh, uh, racked up some impressive statistics. First off, she's had the most pins, uh, which is 28, the most wins, which is 29, and she's only had three losses this year. She qualified uh, for state uh, by pacing third and at the districts and went on to take fourth place uh, in the 121-pound uh, weight division uh, this past February. Uh, so she ended the season with 35 wins and, and five losses. Um, this uh, young lady is, is very nice. I met with her a few weeks ago, uh, very mannerable. You wouldn't think uh, by our stature that she's a wrestler, but uh, obviously with her statistics, she is, she's really doing damage uh, out here, and I'm proud that she's part of uh, ward number eight. So if anybody would like to uh, help um, her raise some money to sponsor her trip to Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, she needs $1,100 in total sponsorship money by, let's see, June 25th. Uh, you can contact me by the city's email if you uh, want to help her out. But I'm really proud that she's in Ward 8, and I'm proud of her accomplishments. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. That's all thank I have. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Hinky. Yes, uh, just last minute notice here. Uh, the first Wednesday night out is tomorrow evening, right down the street here at the VFW uh, in the 400 block of St. Francis. The Wednesday night's always a popular thing. It's just a it's a block party we have once a month. So the first one is right down the street, VFW tomorrow evening. And Mayor, I assume you'll be talking about the plaque dedication prior to that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hankey. Mr. Hicks. <clears throat> Yes, uh, I'd like to congratulate Officer Mann uh, on a very successful fundraiser uh, for the uh, Team Food Pantry and also the Moolah uh, Shrine Air Patrol. Uh, it was kind of a, a creative idea. Uh, Eddie got, uh, he, he was taken by the fire department and had to raise a ransom uh, to, get, to get him back. But one cool thing I wanted to mention was uh, there were some school-age students in, in my ward that had a pop-up lemonade stand, and uh, they had a lot of traffic there, and they raised over $500 uh, for this fundraiser. Uh, so it was kind of a, a, a neat thing to stop by there and, and see how them be so excited and bought into uh, serving beyond themselves. Uh, also, uh, I want to mention that the police department, you may have seen, they, they're offering now some new stickers that would go on uh, the outside of your home, and uh, these are for emergency responders to be able to identify if there are persons with uh, different kinds of disabilities in the home that would have difficulty responding uh, if, if the responders had to enter the home in an emergency. Uh, so it just gives them extra information. For example, it says uh, an occupant may be diabetic, may not respond to verbal uh, commands. So there's one for uh, deaf, Alzheimer's, autism or special needs, and just one that just says disabled. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people in the community are, are getting those. Uh, if you want one, uh, you can get one by emailing Officer Steve Michael, smichael at fluorescentmo.com. And uh, right now, because they are going quickly, uh, it's one per household. Uh, so, so there's that. And also, uh, there's a lot of buzz around, around the 9 p.m. routine uh, effort that the, the department also put out there. And so it's cool to see um, 
residents reminding each other. I see that, that they're reminding each other. So it's just created more awareness. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Yeah, I know some of us with the 9, p 9 p.m. routine got, might have to do it at 8, 7. It just all depends when you go to sleep at night. But no, it is a good thing to get involved with the 9 p.m. routine. Make sure, you know, you go around your house, make sure all your, your vehicles, your doors, and everything's secured, locked up. Uh, on that, um, firearms, if you own a firearm, make sure you secure your firearms. Don't leave it in your vehicle. If you do, and it gets stolen, it happens all the time, you, you have to be responsible for them. Uh, neighborhood Watch, make sure you join your Neighborhood Watch. we got a very, very proactive Neighborhood Watch program in this city, and it does some wonders, and it does work. So make sure you get out and you, um, join your Neighborhood Watch program. Mayor? I'm Jones. sorry. Mr. Jones. You can't forget me, Jeff. I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry, Mr. Jones. Uh, I'd like to get a shout-out to team like I always do. You guys are a food pantry. Uh, everybody has their ups and downs in their careers and the jobs we take. Uh, please take advantage of the place. Uh, a lot of cities don't have that. Uh, it's a very good thing. Uh, there's a lot of volunteers that go down there. A lot of people stop by. So I hope that you guys will take time to do that. Uh, another thing I'd like to say is Shackelford is finishing up that project that's been going for some years now. They're on their punch list now. If anybody out there sees something or needs something done before these guys leave this premises, uh, please get a hold of me. Uh, I was out there all morning. I have met with four residents that have a few more issues, but uh, that's right around the corner. Another thing you guys, I'd like all the city residents to know, the city of Florissant, it makes you feel very good as a council person to drive down the street and see our new mayor out there shaking hands with our city employees and seeing what they're doing seeing who they are and what's going on in our city. So I tip my hat to you, Tim Lowry. Uh, it makes the council feel good when we know that's happening. Another thing I'd like to say is go Blues. Go Blues, go Blues. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mayor? First of all, Tim, thank you very much for uh, the compliment. It's very nice. Uh, of course, I do think it's important for me to, to be out on the streets and uh, talking with uh, our residents and certainly our city employees. And this is now week six for me. And I still haven't uh, been able to meet all the employees, but within the, the, by the end of this week, I should be able to meet all the employees, sit down and talk to them. Um, Todd's laughing in the back because he seems to have the most employees that I have not met yet. Um, but I promise this week that I'm going to do that. Um, and honestly, we do have some wonderful city employees. They do great work for us. And they're really, the, I think, the number one asset that we have here in the city of Florida is our employees and uh, getting things done for our residents. And my message has been very well received as to what I believe needs to be done here. Uh, through our res through our uh, employees, and so it's it's been a great uh, month and a half. So I really I know I got some city employees here. Obviously, some department heads. And I appreciate what you guys do, and that's for all of our city employees. Um, moving on from that, uh, as Gerard mentioned, uh, tomorrow night we have the Wednesday night out. It's from six to nine, and that's going to be highlighted, of course, at the VFW post by the ceremony and plaque dedication, which will be at seven forty-five for Sergeant First Class Charles Prevedel who's a Vietnam um, veteran, um, MIA, POW, and, and he's a, he was in the Green Beret. Um, so please come see the ceremony. I've already talked to the VFW Post. We plan on having that on the parking lot, but we are, we are looking at we might have some bad weather coming in tomorrow. So the ceremony would be moved inside. So even if Wednesday night's a wash, the, the uh, Wednesday night out is a wash out, we're still going to do the plaques uh, dedication at 745. Um, the other thing I want to mention is on uh, June 28th from 6 to 9, at the Knights of Columbus, we have another food truck night. Uh, also been always extremely well attended. And then also at the Knights of Columbus, we have the Fiesta Florissant coming. That's going to be on Saturday, June 22nd from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then on Sunday, June 23rd from 11 a.m. to 9. I know myself and the mem members of the council will be there on Saturday, June 22nd at 5 o'clock uh, for the opening ceremony. So it really is a great festival. I encourage everybody to come and join that. And uh, certainly uh, come out and see us on uh, Saturday. That's all. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. The next regular meeting of the Florida City Council will be on Monday, June 10th, 2019. Mr. Siam moves to adjourn the regular, regular meeting, second by Mr. Scholdroff. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>